So I really didn't want to make this video as there are thousands of videos already on YouTube about Avatar the live action. However, the one thing I don't really see people talking about is how the changes in the live action makes a lot of the things that happen later on in the story and in Korra seem kind of redundant. My standpoint on live action that are being adapted from cartoon is that they are disrespectful to the original medium. I feel like they don't recognize animation as a respectable medium that could stand on its own. That people will only enjoy it if it's a live action. I'm not going to go through every single change like King Boomy being absolutely foul and bitter as I don't think that that is a change that impacts the future of the show overall. First off, Katara. Now Katara in this is so boring. She is so boring and so plain. They took away a lot of the scenes with her and Jet and the episode where she meets Haru and helps him and other earthbenders break free from the Fire Nation prison. And these episodes were very integral to Katara's like development her character development i do find it funny that they were like let's take Sokka's misogyny away but oh no we can't make katara seem like she's confident or have any moment of character growth no 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 they tried to end the show to try and make katara seem i guess important but it just didn't work katara in the original is strong and still has her flaws and that's all the reason why i really like her she doesn't go along with just anything because Tom, Dick, and Harry said so. She is the backbone, the mother, the caretaker of Team Avatar. And I feel like that's the complete opposite to the Katara we get in the live action. I feel as though they took traits from Katara that made her so special and nurturing and gave it to Sokka instead. It makes me think they were trying not to make her seem as though she was like naggy a lot tuning her down and making it seem like she goes with the flow of everything doesn't it kind of make it feel as though they agreed with Sokka's sexism in the original show because they feel as though Katara was too much to begin with so let's tune her down because if we tune her down then she won't be as much we we're technically aiding the misogynistic views we were trying to get rid of in the first place so I don't really see them improving Katara's character and showcasing her development when there are bigger plot points to touch on in seasons two and three. We also meet significant characters. We have just the sheer amount of growth that Zuko has to go through as well. Like we have all of that in seasons two and three. And we have to see Aang learn the other bending styles. Well, speaking of bending, Aang's waterbending. Aang doesn't learn to waterbend in a book that is literally called water because that is where he learns to waterbend. I am not sure why they felt as though they couldn't implement Aang waterbending in this book because water was one of the bending styles that came so easily to him because of how similar it is to air. He could have just added the moment where him and Katara are learning how to waterbend and he's just insanely good at it out of nowhere and Katara is a little bit jealous and you know that would have added to the character and also just team avatars chemistry because in the show I feel as though they have no chemistry at all whatsoever. They could have really just taken away Aang and the other characters talking about how much they feel so much like telling us every single second oh I feel I feel. You can't just have your characters announce how they feel. That makes me feel angry. Rather than tell us how you feel, show us how you feel. Start waterbending, start learning because you have shit to do, you know? Especially since Katara had the waterbending scroll in her possession, they didn't have to steal it from anybody. Grand Grand gave it to them for free, so Jet. This might be a personal opinion, but I don't think they made Katara and Jet's relationship important enough that we should see him again in the show. Remember Jet helped the gang find Appa when he was stolen in Ba Sing Se, but in this, I don't see Jet coming back at all and if he does i think he'll just be for the purpose of the plot like he makes no connection with the other characters not with ang no impact just just nothing the spirit episode we see heibai once and we don't see him again we don't see him get transformed back into a panda like heibai is still just out here yamming civilians and we don't hear anything else about heibai or what happens to me by. But what really irks me about this episode 
is how Katara and Sokka were able to just enter the spirit world because they were in a very like holy or spiritual area and they were with Aang. I think this completely takes away from the point that Unalak was trying to make and the purpose of his character and why he fused with Baltu. Unless you're the avatar captured by a spirit or have a strong connection with the spirit, you cannot just enter the spirit world like that. Tenzin struggled a lot with trying to enter the spirit world. If we're going by the live action then Tenzin will just be able to enter the spirit world because he's sitting next to Korra or he's sitting next to his dad or he's sitting next to Janora like what's the point of him trying to spend all these years learning how to make a deep connection to the spirits learning how to meditate when he could have just entered the spirit world with Aang when he was younger like, Unalak wanted to get rid of the avatar, create a new avatar, and have it so that spirits and man can just go and come as they please between both planes, both worlds. And now the show is renewed for seasons two and three. Just, you can use the money, the time, and the effort into, I don't know, showing how Republic City became a thing because that is a conflict that started right after the show ends. Or we could see what happens to Zuko's mom. Like, can we know what happens to Azula? Does Aang take away her bending too? So many unanswered questions, yet they're choosing to adapt a story that we have seen and love to watch over and over again. It just doesn't make any sense. The time and effort you're spending into doing all that, you can just adapt the comics. The comics is right there. No you want to continue adapting a show that has already been adapted once we don't need another adaptation but now we're getting the seasons two and three anyway i don't know let me know what you think of these changes and what other changes that you specifically didn't like because there's a lot that i didn't like but these changes to me were just the ones i felt like will change the trajectory of the show but yeah that's all i'll see you guys in the next video Bye. And also please let me know what you think of this new editing style. I like trying out new things, so I wanted to so I wanna get feedback. I love having feedback. So um yeah. Thank you. Bye.